Good evening, Red Devil Chemist. It's Coach Scott once again, and uh, we're going to finish up Stoichiometry Worksheet 4G. And we've got one more problem to do, and it is, to be honest, quite the booger. Quite the booger. But it's very practical, all right? Some of y'all want to be chemical engineers and such, or engineers. So let's read this, and we're going to work through this in one video. So if you see it, sulfur, sulfuric acid is an enormously important chemical, and it is. And there's many applications for it in the real world. So it's manufactured using the contact process. So this is how you summarize this process. You can see there's like four steps to it. So one, solid sulfur is burned in air and it produces sulfur dioxide gas. We take what we make in part one <coughs> and then we'll burn it in more oxygen gas and that'll produce sulfur trioxide gas. Then we'll take that sulfur trioxide gas and then we did then dissolve it in concentrated sulfuric acid and that'll produce oleum, H2S2O7. Then we'll take H2S2O7, oleum, dissolve it in water and it becomes a very dilute sulfuric acid and we can dilute it to ever, how much we want to. So let's go through this and what these problems do and they do a really good job of breaking everything down for us. So if we look at A. Write an equation to summarize part one of the process and include state symbols. So let's see part one. So solid sulfur, okay, is burned in air, O2, gas, and it produces sulfur dioxide gas. So let's make sure it's balanced. You got one sulfur, one sulfur, two oxygens, two oxygen. It is. So A is done. So it asks us, and this is where we're going to use a little stoichiometry, how many grams of oxygen are required to completely burn 640 grams of sulfur? So this is all a one mole to one mole ratio, so this should be pretty simple. So we started with 640 grams of sulfur, okay? And we're going to convert that to moles because we always convert everything in stoichiometry to moles. And we're going to divide that through by 32.06 grams. That's the molar mass or the gram molecular weight of sulfur, right? Then I'm going to do this by strictly stoichiometry ways. So one mole, and we're looking now at our molar relationship for every mole of sulfur. We uh, consume one mole of oxygen. So we'll put moles of oxygen up here, one mole of sulfur here. Because we want to be able to cancel everything out then we have to convert that because it asks for mass or how many grams all right and one mole of oxygen has 32 grams and I'm multiplying that because again I want to cancel out my units so let's cancel out the grams of sulfur cancel out the moles of sulfate see what I'm doing there Moles of oxygen, moles of oxygen. So now, if I hit my calculator, I take 640 divided by 32.06 times 1, if I need to, times 32 grams of oxygen. I'm going to come up with a mass of 638.8 grams of oxygen that are required to completely burn. So, next question. If, there is, if there's a 60% yield in this reaction, how much sulfur dioxide would be produced? First, I'm going to do what I did on B, more or less, and I'm going to use dimensional analysis again, and produce what I'm supposed to get, right? Figure out what I'm supposed to get. Calculate my uh, the yield I'm supposed to get, right, from the stoichiometry. So, all right. I've got 640 grams of sulfur from B. All right. Molar mass again, one mole. Okay. One mole over 32.06 grams sulfur. Okay, and I see I got a one to one mole rate ratio. Okay, and that's going to give me the moles of sulfur dioxide. Okay, SO2, 
yes, yes. All right. So, sulfur dioxide, okay, has a molar mass of sulfur is 32.06. So it has a molar mass of 64. Now, I can almost do this in my head. One mole SO2 is uh, 32 plus 32.06, 64.06 grams. Molar ma the mass of sulfur is 32. I've got two oxygen, 16 times two, that's 32, that's 64.06. Mental math is cool. Try and learn it. All right. So that's going to give me the mass of SO2. Okay. And I do my little multiplication. I come up with this step. I'm going to come up with 24, 64, 640, 1280. I'm going to come up with 1280 grams of SO2. So I need to have a 60% yield. So if I take 1,280 grams of SO2 and I multiply it by 60%, or 0.60, I come up with 768 grams of SO2 because it was only a 60% yield. But I had to first calculate what it was supposed to be, right? So another way of looking at that, if I take 768, what I actually got, divided by what I'm supposed to get, 1280, I get about 60%. So that's first part. We've worked that to death now. Let's start working on the second part. Write an equation to summarize part two of the process, including the state symbols. Let's look at part two. Sulfur dioxide gas produced in part one, boom, all right, is then burned in more oxygen produced sulfur trioxide. So it asks us, so we got sulfur dioxide, it is a gas, plus more O2 gas, we're gonna burn it. Okay, and it's going to produce sulfur trioxide gas. Now is that balanced? Well, no. We can go through here, all right? And see we have one sulfur, one sulfur, that's cool. But we got four oxygens, we got three on this side. So let's make that equal. I'm going to put a two there. That gives me two sulfurs on this side, one sulfur on that side. It gives me six oxygens on this side. So now if I put a two there, I've got two sulfurs, two sulfurs. I've got four plus two oxygens. I'm balanced. It's practice. Okay, so we got all that. That was done. So we can move on. So... We'll keep this to the side right here. We'll come back. In a typical process, 500 moles of sulfur tri trioxide is produced from 750 moles of sulfur dioxide. Of sulfur dioxide. 750 moles and excess oxygen. So calculate the percent yield. Okay. So we need to figure out how much we're supposed to get. And we'll need the other sheet for that. So, uh, da, 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 da. that's what it's supposed to get, and this is for sulfur dioxide. So we need to calculate how much sulfur trioxide we actually are supposed to get. So if I have 750 moles of SO2, okay, and I look at my molar mass, look, two, for every mol two moles of SO2, I'm producing two moles of SO3. That's a one-to-one -one relationship. We'll do the official way here. But you can see that's a one-to-one -one relationship. All right. That's going to equal what? 750 moles. Got lucky that time of SO3. So if we get 500 moles SO, SO3, and we're supposed to get 750 moles SO3, that means our, and we multiply that by 100, we're going to get a percent yield of 66.67%. Done. So now we've got to write an equation to summarize part three of the process. Let's look back at part three. So the sulfur trioxide gas is then dissolved in concentrated sulfuric acid, 
need to memorize those acids. H2SO4 is what it is. All right, to produce oleum, H2S2O7. So now we got to write an equation. So SO3 gas plus, what did it say, H2SO4. And it said concentrated, so that means it's in an aqueous environment. And that's going to produce H2S2O7. And I bet you that's a liquid. Or that's aqueous. That's aqueous. Yeah. So that means it's in water. Okay, so that's dissolved. So that's that equation. So let's see if it's balanced. Two, two, two sulfurs, seven oxygens. It's balanced. So it asks next on G, how many moles of oleum are in 1,780 grams of oleum? Let's start with that. And I think we're pretty good with this. C2H2 or S2O7. Uh, oh, Scott messed up. H2S2O7. There we go. Times one mole of, it asks for how many moles of H2S2O7. <coughs> And the molar mass of that is 178.1358 grams. How? I took 1.0079, which is the molar mass of hydrogen. Multiply by 2. I added it to 2 times 32.06 plus 7 times 16. And I came up with 178.1358. So if I divide that by that, guess what I get? 9... 0.992 or more or less 10 moles of C, uh, H2S2O7. 9.99. Or I didn't even take 10 moles. So write an equation to summarize part 4. Let's look at part 4. So the oleum is then dissolved in water and it'll produce dilute sulfuric acid. Dilute sulfuric acid. Know what just happened? Oh, oh, oh. Now let's pause.